Good afternoon. My name is Martin Felder from Tri-Tech Field Engineering. I am not only the technical specialist for the company, but I am the rotor inspector. And we find with a lot of rotors of uh, improper cleaning and usage. Uh, this will cut down on the life of your rotor and possibly could cause a catastrophic rotor explosion in your centrifuge. So your rotors need to really be looked at periodically depending on the usage. Now, there are many different types of rotors. We have aluminum based rotors uh, such as this one right here is an aluminum based rotor. Okay, This is a, a Type 40. Now, you'll notice with all centrifuges you have O-rings and gaskets that need to be looked at and maintained periodically depending on your usage. You have your O-rings that need to be lubricated with vacuum grease and your threads, like the threads here, need to be lubricated with spin coat of some type of lubricant solution. Um, as you will tell right off the bat, the inside of this rotor is anodized. That's meaning that it's an aluminum based rotor. Okay, very important. With an aluminum based rotor you will see that all of this is black on the inside. Okay, in comparison to a titanium rotor which is all gray. Okay? This aluminum based rotor takes a lot more care and needs a lot more care for cleaning. Aluminum cannot stand up to scratch, scratches and abrasions. Um, it can get scratched so when cleaning use a tipless brush. The same thing with the aluminum, I mean with the titanium rotor. Uh, this rotor can be cleaned with a cleaning solution called 555 solution or a mild detergent. Sometimes letting it soak will get the sediment out. But you really need to be careful of R max, which is actually at the bottom of the cavity and would be approximately right here. So your tube will go in here, R max is about right here. You get a lot of sediment that will settle there that definitely needs to be cleaned. Corrosion will take place and an aluminum based rotor. So these need to be cleaned a lot when used. Again, we have uh, our titanium rotor, which is the type 70.1 rotor, which goes up to 70K. You want to be mindful of, in the, in the name of the rotor, you will have the speed designation. Like this, it is a type 70.1 TI, which means that it goes up to 70K, and it is a TI for titanium, which is a much stronger metal, the strongest, one of the strongest metals you can have to make a rotor out of, which will take more abuse, but we really don't want you to abuse it. But you'll have your O-rings, just like on the... On the aluminum base rotor, as you will see, there's no anodization on the inside of this. Uh, when cleaning this rotor as well as the aluminum rotor, you will want to see the mild solution, mild, mild uh, dish detergent, and uh, let it sit in there and with a tipless brush. But you really want to be careful not to score uh, or use a tool. More importantly, in the aluminum rotors, but it is as important in the titanium. The titanium is much stronger. It won't pit and corrode. Um, under the bottom is your overspeed disc. This is what tells your overspeed signal. This is where it derives from. These black and gray segments are proportional to voltages that are read inside of your centrifuge by the detector. Okay? These need to be looked at and inspected and replaced if necessary. Depending on the level of centrifuge that you're using, the electronics is much more sophisticated and sensitive in the optimus. So any pitting or any scratches, scrapes that would impede the signal coming off this overspeed disc will give you a problem. These are very easy to to uh, replace. Just need the right one. And just take this off, put a razor blade under it, get the excess Adhesive off, use your centering tool, just center it there, centering tool, put your rotor disc on there, leave it right side up for 24 hours and then you can use your rotor. But it's very important uh, with 
just rotors in general that you really take your time in what you're doing because a lot of damage can happen if you do not take care. And swinging bucket rotors especially, uh, putting on a bucket is very crucial that you make sure that you check its flight, the path of its flight of its bucket. Because if it's mishung, you'll have a gross imbalance that bucket will come off. Uh, you need to really weigh your samples within a tenth of a gram in an ultra centrifuge. Okay, uh, Optima is a little bit more imbalance tolerant. Uh, we also have here a TL100 rotor, which is an ultra centrifuge, very small. Okay, as you can see, this is a titanium rotor. You want to load this rotor screw it down, then when putting it inside the chamber, make sure that you press the locking mechanism. If not, it can come up. Okay? Press the locking mechanism. To get it off, you depress the mechanism and the rotor will come right out. It's very important that O-rings and overspeed discs and gaskets are checked periodically. These are consumables, but these rotors, depending on age and usage, need to be looked at at least once a year by a trained engineer. Uh, it is imperative that they be looked at. Um, some, some rotors stay on a shelf for some time, I understand that, but we still need to look at it to see any optical damage that has been done, any parts that need to be replaced. Um, we need to check. We also check on a rotor inspection your it dated, the date that it was manufactured. That can be done by tracing the serial number. Serial number will always be embedded. Like this serial number is 1120. Okay, that would be my reference when looking at my sh my chart to check my chart for the age of the rotor. Okay, that looks like that's about it. Um, very important, very important that you get your rotors inspected periodically, and the ones that you use the most need to be done quick. And if you could just keep these clean, these guys will. They'll be fine. They'll be fine and you'll be fine. Thank you very much. It's been great.